Thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is the Watchman Radio Program. Uh, you are again listening to Everlasting Life Radio, and we are broadcasting live from the United Kingdom, London to be exact. I am your host for this hour, Minister Curtis Roach from Shiloh Revival Tamanaka. And uh, this program that I'm bringing you today is all about the end times and to open your awareness to the times that we are living in and to make you aware of the nearness of the imminent and soon coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to rapture his bride, the ready church. I want to let you know I'm not here by chance. I did not bring myself here but I was sent here by the Lord, by the leading of the Holy Spirit to give you these messages, to send this warning that the coming of the Lord is nigh. The coming of the Lord, it is here. The Lord wants you to know that if you are somehow not ready for Him, that now is the time to get ready and be ready because a moment is coming when you will not have that opportunity when you will not have that chance because the rapture would have come upon you in the moment in the twinkling of an eye that's how fast it will appear it will come and it will go and you will not even notice it all you will know that millions of people from all across the world would have disappeared and I want to let you know that when that happens it's not aliens that have come and abducted anyone they were not kidnapped and hidden somewhere know for a fact that according to the Word of God according to the scriptures that they were raptured that the Lord God has come to collect them because they are his bride so I want you to know that very pollusively clear and that you will not be deceived by the many things or the many excuses that will be brought about at that time so know that you've heard it from the Watchman radio program. And you can investigate it yourself. Investigate the word of God if you are in that position now and you're listening to this replay on YouTube. That it is exactly as I say it is. So having said that, I want to get into the program today. As I said, I have a message from the Lord for you. And it's a simple message today. All the Lord is saying to you is just three words. I am coming. The Lord has sent me here today to tell you he is coming. And just as I've said and explained before. He is coming to rapture his bride. He is not sitting down waiting. He is coming. He is not getting himself ready. He's already ready. He's on his way. He is coming. Time is short, people. He is on his way. Make your last preparations now and get it completed before it is too late. To confirm this word, he has taken me back to the scripture in the book of Luke chapter 21 I know that I shared with you some time ago from this passage of scripture but I am asked to revisit it to reinforce the message that I have that the Lord has sent through me today to let you know that he is coming and quite clearly 
as the word of God tells us that he has given us signs to look out for so that we can know that indeed that he is coming and if you have your Bibles you can turn to the book of Luke chapter 21 and I want to start by reading from verse 7 and uh, these verses this passage is laying out the signs of the times and the age the signs that Jesus himself spoke and told us to look out for with regards to what I'm saying today exactly what we are claiming today the signs points to his coming directly to his coming what are these signs let's read and find out so in the book of Luke 21 from verse 7 it reads so they asked him saying teacher but when will these things be and what sign will there be when these things are about to take place and he said Jesus speaking now take heed that you not be deceived and just to let you know before I continue that I'm reading from the new King James Version and not very much different from the King James Version but it gives you a little clearer understanding of what the scripture is saying and uh, let me continue uh, let me reread that verse 8 and he said take heed that you not be deceived for many will come in my name saying I am he and the time has drawn near now let me stop there for a minute because I want you to get what Jesus is saying to you today what he's saying just like I'm coming to you saying that the time is near the Lord he does not want you to take my word for it it might sound a little bit strange to you that I'm saying that to you but I'm being very clear very straightforward and serious with you today do not take my word for it in other words and in addition to what I've just said don't take anybody word for it everybody that comes to you and tell you listen Jesus is coming his coming is near don't take their word for it what Jesus wants you to do is to know for yourself and that is why he has laid out these things in the scripture so that you can know it for yourself rather than taking somebody else's word that you can search the scripture for yourself and open your ears and open your eyes to the things that are happening around you to the things that are happening in the world in your country in your neighborhood and know for yourself that he is coming so it doesn't matter who even the ones out there that have come and say listen I am he I am Jesus I know there are a lot of people out there that are claiming to be Jesus and if you search the internet I've, I conducted a program recently not recently sometime I think last year and I gave you names of people in the world right now that claim to be Jesus Christ that claim to be reincarnated and these people are seriously they're not making jokes they are here today with you and me in this world and they are deceiving many many actually believe that Jesus has already come so the word is telling us listen take heed that you be not deceived these people have been fooling a lot so it is quite possible 
if you cross their path that you yourself can be deceived but the word of God is coming to you today to take heed and be very careful don't listen to other people don't rely on other people not even myself but what you should be doing is to rely on the word of God you just heard a program that started at 3 p.m. today. The message that was preached there is that there is no substitute to the Word of God. And that is where we will find all the answers. So the Lord wants you to know for yourself today. He wants you to research the Word, to come read it, study it, and examine it against what is going on around you what is going on in the world what is going on on the news and know for yourself know for sure that what i'm saying today is true that what the lord is saying to you today is indeed a fact so he wants you to search the word i'll continue therefore do not go after them but when you hear of wars and commotions, do not be terrified. Listen, take note that the Lord said, when you hear of wars and commotions, again, this is a personal thing you have to know for yourself. Don't count on what other people say. I'm stressing very seriously on this because... There is a greater appreciation of the fact of the matter when you are able to see and hear for yourself. You see, when you have first-hand information, then the truth is right in front of you. You can hold it, you can embrace it, you can accept it, even more so than when you hear it from another source. Even though you believe that source to be credible getting it for yourself makes all the difference so he says do not be terrified for these things must come to pass first but the end will not come immediately verse 10 says then he said to them nation will rise against nation aren't we seeing this right now Aren't we seeing the various nations of the world rising against one another? The United States of America rising against Russia and vice versa. United Kingdom rising against Russia and other places and vice versa. In the Middle East, same thing happening. Do not we see this very clearly? I'm sure you're listening to your news. These things are taking over the headlines of the news quite recently. You can't hide from them. You will see them. And it says kingdom against kingdom. Clearly, these things are happening right now, right under our noses. We cannot deny them. There's no way we can deny them. Verse 11 says, and there will be great earthquakes in various places listen can you deny that you hear it all over the news where earthquakes have been happening all over the world some so severe that they are killing hundreds and thousands of people quite recently there was one in china i think within a matter of weeks that killed a lot of people and these earthquakes are happening more frequently in these last days. Just like birth pains. Just like the Bible tells us it would happen. They are more, happening more frequently and with more intensity. So this is again something we cannot deny. You know I have an application of my phone that gives me updates. It gives me a link directly to the earthquake center in the US that records every bit of earthquake that happens from around the world every earthquake that happened goes through this center and they record them 
and I get them straight to my phone. And I can tell you that within any 24 hour, every 24 hour, that almost 200 earthquakes happen. Yes, over or under 200 earthquakes happen within the matter of a 24 hour period. Every 24 hour period. And between 10 to 20 percent of those are above 2.5 on the Richter scale. And as I said before, these figures, they are constantly increasing. And the intensity of these earthquakes, the damage that they're doing, are also increasing. So this again is something that we see quite clearly is happening. Scripture goes on to say, and famines and pestilences. I do not even have to elaborate on these. You see, these things have been happening a long time. Pestilences. If you read the news, you'll hear about this new string of disease called Ebola. Is that not what the Bible is talking about? Quite clearly, we see these are happening right before our very eyes, right on our noses. Famines that has been happening all over the world may not be happening where you are right now, but it has been happening don't look for these signs to happen on a worldwide scale like every single nation every single island will be experiencing these signs at the same time the bible never tells us that so i want you to be very clear that these things are happening if not where you are if not in your vicinity they are happening if you are to turn on your tv to the news and listen you will see and you will hear the scripture goes on to say and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven and we see fearful sights and great signs from heaven all the time every day and i don't even want to start to go into some of these because time is running away from me so verse 12 says but before all these things and I want us to stick up in there I want you to note very well what this verse is saying he says but before that word before an operative word in this verse but before all these things what things the things that we have just spoken about all those things he says they will lay their hands on you and persecute you how much have you been hearing about the persecution of Christians worldwide, globally, even here in the UK? Christians have been persecuted left, right and center all over. What the scripture is saying here, listen, before these persecutions that we are already seeing, it says before that you will be seeing all this stuff that we have discussed before. This is confirming that all these other things that we have just spoken about the earthquakes and the nation rising against nation and kingdom against kingdom and every other thing that we have just spoken about that they must have already come into play because this sign here the persecution bit of it the bible is saying the word of god is saying before you see this which we are already seeing that you would have already seen those other things so i want you to be clear about that and note it very well it says before all these things they will lay their hands on you and persecute you delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons and lately we hear about the story of the young lady that was detained and was recently released it made the headlines so you cannot say oh you haven't heard it or you haven't seen it it was news all around the world every nation had an interest in it and it is a clear sign of the persecution that we as christians are suffering 
because she was imprisoned, because she, hold, she held fast to her faith in Christ. She did not denounce him when she was asked to. Even in the face of the, the laws that were written to accommodate the Islamic laws, a state that is run by Islamic laws, even though she was in that situation, she did not bend. And that is why it picked up such attention. And uh, what I'm saying here today is that you see that this sign is very much in front of your eyes playing out before you. The scripture goes on to say, You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Verse 13, But it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. And what a testimony she has been to the world about how God can deliver about the power of prayer hallelujah hallelujah even in a state an Islamic state run by Islam she was able to be freed they wanted to kill her according to their law she broke them and she was deserving of death but we interceded on behalf the Lord Jesus, he stepped in on her case and delivered her. This is something unheard of. But it happened. Why? Because there is power in the name of Jesus. And there is power when you pray in the name of Jesus. Once you put him on the case, you will always come out victorious. Verse 14 says, Therefore settle it in your hearts, not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, relatives and friends. We see this happen every day. And they will put some of you to death. We see this happening around the world and you will be hated by all for my name's sake listen these are things that are happening and we cannot deny them we cannot in any way deny them verse 18 says but not a hair of your head shall be lost but your patience possess your souls but your patience possess your souls and skipping down to verse 25 which talks about the coming of the son of man he says and there will be signs in the sun in the moon and in the stars and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring we see this happening to samis distress of nations we see this happening all over the world even here in the UK at times all these are signs that we cannot deny because we see them happening they have been been they are being broadcasted on the news on a daily basis men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now listen to this verse, verse 28. It says, Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. <laughs> listen, your redemption draws near. The Bible says when you see these things begin to happen, they have already begun, people. We hear them. We see them. They have begun to happen. So our heads should be lifted up right now into the skies because our redemption joy nigh. And I want to leave that passage of scripture with you for you to go over and research for yourself as I said don't take my word for it read it for yourself study it for yourself and examine what you read against what you see and what you hear and no doubt 
you will see that everything that we are saying here, everything that I've said, that it is so, according to the word of God. Signs are everywhere, people. Oh, we see so much things happening around us. Islam is rising. And you know what came into my spirit the other day? I'm not saying it is. Don't misrepresent what I'm saying here now. I posted a question on Facebook. What if the Antichrist is not a person per se, but a religion? Listen to that question again. What if the Antichrist was not a person per se, but a religion? Just something for you to ponder about, to think on. Listen again. Let me reiterate, I'm not saying that this is so. This is just a thought. Just my personal thought. When I think about it, I think about Islam. The religion which is totally against Christ, being who he said he is. You know, they claim that this religion is growing. But the fact is, that they are forcing people to convert to Islam threatening them with their lives so if that religion is growing in any way it is through the threat of lives and from people that fear them that fear dying that f fear what they might experience if they do not convert so that could be very much so a false claim but you know just recently i read an article a news article that is that heads it says that muslims are turning to yeshua by the thousands and hundreds of thousands and that is a fact and i just want to read that passage just to let you hear what the news article is saying it says last week and i think i read this article it was just yesterday i read this article he said last week the writer says i attended an evangelism conference for muslims i heard father botros that's the name of the man the evangelist there who is daily seeking multitudes of muslims come to faith in Yeshua the Messiah. He spoke of how his 90-minute daily satellite TV program is reaching over 50 million listeners every day in Muslim lands. He is an Egyptian Coptic Christian who has been exiled from his country. The jihadists find him so dangerous that they have put a bounty on his head for $60 million. He and the other evangelists at the conference reaching Muslims are absolutely fearless. This father, Zachariah, reports there are two and a half million converts to Christianity in Egypt. Two and a half million converts. To Christianity in Egypt a similar number in Pakistan and 5 million in Sudan he says in the last three decades more Muslim have come to believe in salvation through Jesus Christ than in the last 14 centuries of Islam he goes on to say even in hardcore Islamic Arab nations or Arab nations God is on the move hallelujah Joel Rosenberg, a prize-winning author and founder of the Joseph Fund, reports that each year 10,000 Muslims are becoming Christians in Algeria, 35,000 a year in Morocco, 50,000 in Saudi Arabia, some 6 million a year in Africa are converting to Christianity. These bold evangelists believe by faith that Islam is collapsing it is collapsing they're spreading this false rumor that they are growing that they are the fastest growing religion 
And they are going all about the place trying to force people to convert by threatening them with their lives. But the fact of the matter is God is on the move today. He is on the move. And millions of Muslims across the world, they are experiencing a personal encounter and relationship with Jesus Christ who is the son of the true and living God. They are experiencing him. And they are coming to the saving knowledge by his grace. Their eyes are being opened. The blindfolds are being removed. And they are seeing the truth for what it is. If you are out there and you are a Muslim, these figures should speak to your heart right now, letting you know that something must be wrong within the confines of Islam. Why all these Muslims are turning from Islam to Christianity, even at the cost of some of their lives? Listen, don't be stupid. Examine this fact and find out why. Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Listen, God is on the move. The signs of the times are everywhere. We cannot deny what is happening. The Lord, He is speaking to your heart right now. Today, if you hear His voice, harden not your heart, but take heed to what He's saying to you. You are listening to the Watchman. So as time draws to a close where I will have to get up from here and leave you. I want to reiterate the point and the fact of the matter that Jesus Christ, he is very soon coming. In fact, his coming is much more sooner than you may think. That is why the Bible clearly tells us that he will be coming like a thief in the night. When you least expect, he's going to show up. And if you're not ready, you will be left behind to face what is coming to this world. And it will not be a nice thing. You know, for the past few days, from Monday to Thursday of this week, I was at a prophetic voice a minister's conference. And we spoke about things like these, like this. And the man of God, Apostle Alfred Williams, I had him on the program here a few weeks ago. A powerful man of God, a man that has been visited by the Lord himself on a numerous occasion, on numerous occasions. The Lord has took him to heaven and has showed him some very vital and important things. He has heard some very vital and important things and he shared some of those with us even on the, uh, the program that we had with him a few weeks ago and one of the thing that he shared that he also shared in the conference that we have that we had a few days ago that the Lord I uh, think it was in 1999 or somewhere around there when the Lord took him to heaven on that occasion the Lord opened up the history book for this world and show him certain things that are to happen in the future and you know all everything that he was shown he came back and he preached about it and every single thing came to pass just as he said 
this is a man that even predicted and spoke about the 9-11 situation and it happened just like he said and every other thing that he spoke about the collapse of the economy and so on in various countries he spoke them before they happened and they happened just like he said he is a proven a man of God an apostle of God and he said that the Lord opened up the history book of the world he showed him right down 2010 2011 2012 2013 he showed them he showed him 2014 and he showed him 2015 but something happened there what he said that when it come when it came to the point where he was to see what is going to happen in 2015 that the Lord closed the book listen this is very significant he said that the Lord closed the book and he later understood that that meant that the chapter a chapter in this world would have been closed and a new chapter will be opened what the closing of that chapter means nobody knows we do not know could it mean that the rapture would have happened would have already happened yes it could mean that or it could mean something else we do not know nobody's setting no days no time be clear about that but it is a possibility the fact that the Lord decides not to show him anything beyond 2015 is very significant something we have to think about and just to confirm that my son who is quite gifted in himself very zealous for the Lord and has been receiving dreams and visions he had a dream just a month or two or three ago in which he saw that we were in a church we meaning him and uh, his family which is me his mom and all of us we were in a church listening to a message and and someone he said he saw someone was preaching but he said the the thing about that person that person almost looked invisible in other words that person probably probably was transparent but he was preaching the mess preaching a message and the message he was preaching according to what my son heard in the dream and uh, this is a dream this is not something he concocted he heard this in the dream he said that the rapture is going to happen tomorrow that was the message that was being preached that the rapture was going to happen tomorrow now quite clearly this did not mean a physical tomorrow but it is to signif uh, signify the closeness of the rapture of Christ and what comes to mind when I think about it is that oftentimes in prophecy or in the Bible that when the Bible speaks about a day it normally refers to a year it normally means a year so a year in the Bible in many parts of the Bible means a year so again this is just something for you to think about very serious these are significant signs that the Lord is sending through his people. Clearly, he tells us in Joel 2.28, he is going to be giving us these dreams and visions, so we cannot discount them. We have to take them seriously. So as you heard the word of the Lord come forth, I want you to bear in mind that if you are not ready, that you need to get ready. No, before it's too late because time is short even more shorter than you may think so if you're there and the Lord is speaking to you you want to be saved today you do not know how I want to help you that is why I'm here to help you to get what I have the Lord is offering his free gift of salvation today and all you have to do is just but to come and accept it 
and receive it. You do not have to do anything for it. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to earn it. It's a free gift. Just like somebody that you don't know from Adam just come to you and put a hundred pounds, a hundred dollars, a hundred yens, whatever currency you use in your country in your hand and tell you, listen, that is yours. Go ahead. No obligations. That is exactly what the Lord is offering to you today. He's offering you life, land, life eternal, life everlasting. He's offering you life. everlasting life for free all you have to do is to say yes Lord I want it please give it to me yes that is all he said in his word that all you have to do is to confess your sins is to surrender your life to him just believe in your heart that who he is he says he is that he is and ask him to come into your heart and to save you and that is all that it takes. He, his blood that was shed on the cross over 2,000 years ago. That blood is sufficient to wash away any sin, every sin. So it doesn't matter who you are or what you have done. You have an opportunity right now to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So I want to say a prayer with you. Just repeat it. And you will have received everlasting life. After me, say this prayer, Lord Jesus, I recognize that you are the Son of the true and living God, and that you came to earth and died for my sins. You said in your word that if I confess my sins, that you will forgive me of them. So please, Lord, I ask for your forgiveness now in your precious name. Forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Wash me with your blood and remove every spot and every stain. Make me whole and write my name in the book of life today. Fill me with your Holy Spirit to help me to walk this walk. Thank you, Jesus, for answering my prayer. And thank you for saving me. Amen. Hallelujah. If you said that prayer, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. You have just now received that free gift of salvation just like that. But the onus is up to you now to hold on to it and not to let it go. But I want to let you know also that you have the power over the enemy right now. With God inside you, with the Holy Spirit of God inside of you, working in and through you, you have the power to hold on to what you have just received and not let it go. Nobody can force it from you, not even the devil himself. He don't have the power. He is useless against you as a child of God. So hold on to what you have and don't let it go. Thank you for coming forward and accepting and for accepting the Lord today as your Lord and Savior. The Watchman. 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 And my time is up. It's time for me to leave you. But I do pray that you have received the word that the Lord has sent to you today. just want to remind you that you're listening to Everlasting Life Radio. We are broadcasting from the United Kingdom. And you are listening to the Watchman Radio Program. With your host, Minister Curtis Roach from Shiloh Revival Tamanaka. Just want to extend an invitation to you there. If you are in London or planning a trip to London anytime and you want to find a church that preaches the unadulterated word of God, that you can find us at Parkview School on West Green Road in London. The postcode there is N15. 
3 qr you can find us there every thursday every sunday sorry from 12 p.m to 3 p.m if you'd like to contact me for any further information you can find me on facebook you can search for me there by searching for minister curtis roach or you can search for the page for this program under the name the watchman radio program search for me leave me a message and i'll be able to respond to you just want to let you know that this program will be up on YouTube from sometime tomorrow. You can go there, find it on the, my channel. You can subscribe to it. Uh, it's, you can uh, f- search for it and find it under my name, uh, Curtis Roach. That's C-U-R-T-I-S-R-O-A-C-H, Curtis Roach. Uh, that's my YouTube channel where I post all of my radio programs, current, present, and past. So you can find on all of them there. They are also all on my website at uh, www.spreadingthegospelvideoservices.co.uk. This information will also be on your screen, your TV screen, your phone screen, on the YouTube upload. So you can find it there. You can go to the various links and get the information that you need to encourage you, to lift you up, and to prepare you for the times that we are in. Thank you again for listening. My time is up. I have to go. Jesus come.